Hello everyone, my name is Adam Reeples Vox, and welcome back to part 2 of my Epifan Pearl from Epifan Video uh, tutorial series for my channel. Now this is, we're handling the more advanced back-end content, and so pulling up my list here, I'm going to show you how to change the admin password, which we're going to start with first, then set up a static IP, and then a few different ways that you can update the firmware. So let's go ahead, logged into our admin dashboard, I'm going to show you how to do most of these things on both the web UI and the actual Perl touchscreen itself, but we're going to start with setting an admin password. Let's take a look down to the configuration tab and click access passwords. By default, of course, if you go to the Epifan Perl page, the login is just admin with no password. But here, you can set up a few different passwords. You can set up an admin password. So, uh, we'll just make it password for now. New operator password for people who can operate it but not change, you know, back in administrative settings. We'll give that uh, password1. And then viewer access. People who just want to view stuff will just give it viewer and then you can also set up more advanced authentication, such as IPs to allow or disallow to actually connect to the device uh, for whitelisting or blacklisting, LDAP authentication, the stuff we're not really going to mess with. This is just focusing on setting up a password in general. Click apply. And you see up here, all right, it's going to refresh after the configuration has been applied. All right, here, if we go to the IP for the Perl, if we type in operator and then our password, and now under the Perl logo, it shows that we are logged in as operator. So just a quick and easy password change here. All right, next up, I'm going to show you how to change the IP address to a static IP in the Epifan Perl via the web UI. And then I'll show you on the actual Perl itself. So if we go down here to network under configuration, you can use DHCP, of course, which has given us a... 192.168.047 IP address, or we can use a static one. Since I've been doing stuff using this IP address, I'm going to actually assign it a static IP of 47, or of 0 0.47. That way it's consistent with what I've been working with. You may want to do this, like if you want to save a bookmark to go to the Epifan Perl to access the Perl configuration and such, then you'll need a static IP because every time you set it up on a new network or whatever, it will change the IP address very often. Um, however, you want to make sure that whatever network you're on, of course, would have that IP available. So you can set something super obscure so that most networks aren't going to have any device with that IP. Or since I'm on my home network, I know this is available because it just assigned it to it. So I'm just going to assign it 47. And then you'll want to fill in the gateway based on the network or just leave it blank. Here you also have the ability to tether internet via your USB phone connection, so a smartphone. You can actually tether the internet connection and stream from the Perl via a phone or tablet, and you can tell whether you use tethering at all or if you prefer Ethernet, and if there's no Ethernet active connection, then it can connect via the tethering, which is really, really cool. And then you can do d network diagnostics to make sure the Perl has actual access to the internet via pinging or trace routing to an IP or server. And simply click apply with any setting that you use when you're done. So to set the static IP on the Perl itself via the touch screen, simply click the gear icon for your settings, go to network, and then static IP. You also have DHCP options above that. And then set your static IP. I did 192.168.047. And then set your gateway for your router. By default, that should be one for most networks, but for mine it's 192.168.0.111. And then set your default, well that's your default gateway, and then set your subnet if you like, or your DNS servers. I'm leaving the DNS server blank in the, in the subnet as basic, as just 255s, that's it. And then if you want to make sure that the IP is set right, simply go back and go to your status, and your system status, and it will show you what the IP is for the device. To return the Perl back to DHCP settings at any time, just select the DHCP menu option, and it will revert back. To check for firmware updates on your Epifan Perl, per first go to, on your admin config dashboard for the web UI. You can view your firmware version and revision as well as the date that it was released. But to actually check for updates, go to the configuration tab, 
firmware upgrade, and then there's a link that says check for updates. In this example, no updates are available, so no steps need to be taken. If you want to do a manual update, say you have a beta firmware or a firmware file you downloaded on your own or your, FF, your Perl is offline, go to that same menu but click the choose file button. Navigate to the directory that you have downloaded your firmware file to. Mine is in my downloads folder. And then select your firmware file. Mine is a BFRM file. And then click apply. And again, you do not want to touch the pearl at all. Do not power it down. Do not unplug it. Don't even just go near it. While it's doing its thing, it will need to completely, you know, reinstall the firmware and reboot the entire machine. This will take a few minutes, depending on various factors, but it'll probably take a few minutes. And then once it's done, you can go back to the web UI and see that the current firmware version is the one that you installed. And you're good to go.